Hello, my creative collective. This is your Libra full moon reading, Taurus, my Taurians. Oh, and the light went off. <laughs> Let me do this here. Ta-da, we are back. <laughs> so let's dive right in, shall we? So I'd like to invite the angels, my guardian angels, my spirit guides, protectors, teachers, and their healing energy to this space. And I ask that it is a safe space that allows for the fullest expression of our light, humanity, ascension, and healing. Okay. Let's do this. So we're using the uh, traditional Rider Waite Tarot, but it is the gold and black edition because it's shiny and I want to. Um, so yeah, it's got the little, that's a little twinkle. Okay. Let's see what spirit has to say for the Libra full moon Taurus. Whoa. The Empress. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. That is lovely. Five of Swords. I'm hearing protect your energy, Taurus. Protect your energy this month. And specifically around this, yeah. Ooh. Tower on the bottom. Something that you don't see coming. A choice but okay so that's okay thanks so much spirit um so we have the empress uh kicking off things here this is venus energy uh which is beautiful energy this is we're coming up on your season taurus this is also uh potentially related to the eclipse at the end of the month uh in your sign on the 29th of april uh 30th by tw by 29th i meant 30th <laughs> oh my gosh anyways so we're kicking things off there and I'm just getting this image and impression of don't let the don't let the way that you feel grounded make you think that it's it's like this resting on your laurels almost. And it's not the emperor showing up in reverse necessarily. I just think that there's something you you need good boundaries. I think because others are kind of looking at you in this not so great way where they're people might be a little bit I don't want to say jealous, but sometimes people look at what we have and instead of looking at what they can do to create that, they look at what they don't have and they feel like there's this, they feel hard done to because you are doing well, because you are succeeding. Um, and that's not always true, but it's just a, a kind of, it's an energy to be mindful of because it can really be draining. And if you are giving and if you are an empath, if you are in that energy, then what that means is that sometimes you can fall into people pleasing. You can fall into things that endeavor to soothe the way that it feels like a five of swords was done to them when realistically it's not your job to do that. And I think that there's kind of a little uh, messenger of the truth coming in here could be some kind of online communication, could be something that you see. I mean, it could be a reading on here that you see and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, right, back on track. Um, but the reason why I'm saying that there's something to be protective of with your energy is that I think that there's a um, an offer that's coming in that's going to, you're going to have to make a choice about something. And I don't think that it's going to be uh, easy. So we have the Ace of Pentacles, the Tower, and the Lovers. Um so this could be related to love. It could also be related to communication, right? Mercury is uh, the ruler of Gemini, whose card this is. So it could be that there's some kind of choice that you're making about how you're communicating. And this can also be, I mean, the page of swords is here, which is kind of online, the, the online um, accumulation or acquisition of information, right? So a little bit of internet stalking. Um, but this could also just be messages exchanged online. The reason why what just came to mind with the, uh, the third house energy of Mercury in the Gemini, the lover's card here is this sort of synthesis of data. So we collect data about the world and this can be the way that we build beliefs, right? Mercury energy is communication energy, but it's also um, how we communicate data. It's how we communicate or data, whichever you prefer. Uh, it's how I know when I was in grad school, there was a big debate about it, but I how you collect data and how you synthesize it and what story you tell from the data so it's almost like it could be that there's an awareness that you have of um your in your value right your value and the data you've collected about yourself before kind of flies in the face of of this and it kind of allows you to go from this page energy into um 
something that's a little bit more grounded and stable, right? The Ace of Pentacles kind of brings about this Ten of Cups and Knight of Pentacles, which is kind of a grounded happiness that you feel. And I think it's you're choosing something to do with you, like you're choosing value and you're choosing to see stories. You're choosing to see thoughts, a lot of swords energy here in these two cards. You're, you're choosing to see things and synthesize the data differently because you're showing up as the Empress. And this is almost like a little wobble on your faith in yourself and your trust in yourself, right? So you're kind of like, I don't really know. And then you land in it much more effectively and, and with much greater um, access to your inner resources and inner strength. Spirit, can, I'm going to clarify these. Can I get some clarification here uh, for these for these energies of the Libra full moon for Taurus? The sun. I mean, yeah, that's. I think that this is really about you reaching for a better, a different version of the happiness that you've really wanted. It makes a lot of energy accessible to you now when you do this. But again, just being cautious of this, this story that just because you have doesn't mean that you have taken from anyone else. Like unless you have, I mean, I wouldn't recommend being in that kind of energy. But this to me says that there's a need to balance um, to balance perspectives and to give yourself a fairer attack. Yeah, messages coming in. This could be downloads that you're getting about your happiness from spirit. I do think that you're in a high vibe manifesting place. Ace of Pentacles again and the lovers again. Jeez. Okay, so then we got uh, so we got the magician here. Uh, very high vibe manifesting place. And that's where this offer is coming from. So keep, be mindful of that tower, right? This is your awareness of your worth because your choice here, this is the high vibe choice, right? Ace of pentacles and lovers. The reason why I see the tower and the other cards here informing the lovers down here is that I think that the tower is, it's going to shock you that you're choosing yourself. It's going to shock you that you're choosing Um you're choosing to see the story differently. You're choosing to see a more grounded story of fulfillment for yourself that may not have been accessible or available to you, my darling Torians. Spirit, can you clarify this five of swords for me, please? Devil. Yeah, this is, I, I feel like this is other people not trying to knock you off your path. But again, sometimes people see our happiness as a threat to them because they see happiness as an external process. If someone doesn't give to them, if they don't have, like, it's like a win-lose, zero sum is what I'm hearing, zero sum proposition is what like success seems like to some people and that could be a narrative that you're overturning for yourself no one has to lose you can kind of just <laughs> you can it's the fool energy right you can win and other people can win but a lot of the time the stories that we tell ourselves are ones that mean that success is either in the moon energy or the emperor energy, right? Like we have the choice as to how we approach different situations. I highly recommend emperor. I highly recommend magician. Death. Yeah, this is definitely something that you're transforming. Yeah, you're moving away from this. Okay, so we have the fool on the death card. This is beautiful. I'm so appreciative of spirit for this reading. From a Taurians, like this is beautiful. Um, okay, so we have the death card that showed up, which is Scorpio and transformation energy. And then we have the five of swords showing up again to clarify the five of swords and the six of swords clarified that. So this is you moving away from those types, those types of behaviors. And it's really freeing yourself, this fool card, you're freeing yourself from this really dense energy, this really dense energy of living up to other people's expectations and expectations, just meaning that if, if you don't succeed, then you don't cast shadows, right? The, as long as you're not shining your light, people don't have to see the shadow that that are cast right they don't have to they don't have to be in that energy page of sword spirit thank you so much wheel of fortune definitely a cycle ending mm -hmm. and i think this has taken a long time and I, you might have felt kind of confused taurus as to why this hasn't happened sooner uh, but i really get the impression that this is something that has just come to an end yeah seven of swords it's just over it is over. Justice is here to tell you that you no longer have to wonder or be in your head. It is safe for you to be successful. It is safe for you, Taurus, to have what you really want, but also what you need, to have what you want and need. And I think that this justice card here is bringing in balance and helping you to shift out of this place of potential overgiving in the Empress energy. Knight of Wands, yeah. Yeah page of wands this i'm just reading as two competing things inside you that you just kind of have to get you have to i'm hearing get right with or get right within you um 
different, uh, these competing passions. One is a bit newer and the other one's a little bit more established, but this could also just be your interest, something that's piqued your curiosity and your potential tendency to shift towards impulse. So like impulsively running towards what you're curious about without an established understanding. And that could be what's gotten you into trouble. Page of Swords just fell out and I was going to put it here, but it's on the Page of Swords row. So um, this is, we're seeing doubles in specific rows, which is really emphasis on this energy. This is like spirit saying, I, you need to pay attention, Taurus. You need to pay attention right now. Um, not because we need to pay attention in and be in the energy of other people coming to us and being fearful. Um, it's because there's new, like this is new contracts. This is uh, contracts coming to fruition. This is celebration. I think these are the things that are available to you, but I think this is really important and pretty crucial, right? Um, resist the impulsive urge to be in this page of swords energy, right? Like look up data, but let it work in your favor. If you look up information, you know, like I've, I heard someone say recently, like, don't, don't ask questions that you don't want answers to, right? Don't look up information if you don't want the answer, or if you're nervous about the answer, if you're nervous about where it's going to lead you, don't do things that are kind of deleterious or, you know, against your best good. It just doesn't work out, Taurus. And you're showing up in this beautiful empress, sun, magician, lovers, energy. Yes, there's a transformation of the way that you're standing in your power. But I also get the impression that this has been a bit overdue. And it's really freeing you up to move away from manipulative energy that tries to convince you that your success is not like it's somehow. Um, I, I think that anytime, anytime we succeed or other people succeed, that just adds to what we, we, we can imagine as a possibility for ourselves and others. It expands. It's a Jupiter energy, this wheel. It expands. So when people feel threatened by that, it says so much more about where their energy is at, Taurus, than yours. So please do not shrink. Do not play small. Um, I'm going to clarify this Ace of Swords or Ace of Pentacles, Tower, Lovers, Knight of Pentacles, and Ten of Cups. Spirit, can I get some clarification on this here? So far I have the Eight of Pentacles, the Nine of Wands. Seven of Cups. Yeah, resistance, a lot of resistance. And I think that this is you questioning yourself. Yeah, more resistance. It's you questioning yourself because you are kind of used to playing small. Like the Empress may be how people see you. The Empress may be how you've shown up in the world. But then I'm getting this like playing small energy. But this change is happening regardless, regardless. So I think it's important. Yeah, it's... It, there is going to be cause for celebration, even if it doesn't feel like it right this red hot minute, because this is a thing that's coming to an end and it is balancing out. It is balancing out. Saturn lessons are hard. They require a lot of discipline from us. Um, but in the end, I think that they are really, I mean, the, the death card is here. They're transformational. They're transformational because they change how we see things and ourselves. And it's something that affects, it's like a, a sort of it's a little ripple that goes out into the way we do everything in our life, right? That's Saturn's lessons. And I think too, that when we integrate the lessons of Saturn, there are different things that we are capable of stepping into, our, you know, in terms of our power, our, you know, the way that we create things and manifest with the magician energy here. So I think that this cycle is one that you will find, um, is is at a point of completion at the Libra full moon. Uh, the other thing I might want to consider if I were you, Taurus, is the role of the eclipses this year. Um, I have this written down here um, in terms of the dates. Oops, sorry. So the solar eclipse is uh, happening in Taurus, so your sign on April 30th. And then on May 16th, there's a lunar eclipse in Scorpio. And then the next set of them is October 25th, and that's the solar eclipse in Scorpio. And then November 8th is the total lunar eclipse in Taurus. Um, but this solar eclipse in Taurus. So um, we tend to think of it sort of the, the <laughs> there are things that may not be very obvious to you right now that will come to light around that time. And that could be this process in the way that you're seeing yourself. So I would say, take a look at the, the, um, full moon energy as, um, I'm hearing precursor and I don't want to say precursor definitively because that that's a general reading. So it may not apply to everybody. Um, but the full moon is possibly bringing to light things that are in need of balance within as you continue on this journey that you're on Taurus. So, um, it's a big one, but I have every bit of faith that you're on the right path. 
Uh, so in terms of signs and houses, we have Venus, uh, which is the which is the ruler of your house, Taurus, second house. Uh, this is also the seventh house with Libra. So Libra full moon again, like this. I, I feel like it might be a big a big one for you, Taurus. Uh, the sun is Leo in the fifth house. We also have the magician here, which is Mercury energy and the third house and the sixth house as well. Uh, we also have the lovers, which is Gemini and more Mercury energy. So this is also where I feel like you're going to have to uh, get really comfortable telling people how you feel about um, some of this manipulation and behavior, right? Getting pretty comfortable with that is going to be important. So Capricorn is uh, a devil. <laughs> devil energy is Capricorn and that's 10th house and Saturn. We also see Saturn in the world here. So it could be something to do with career or the 10th house for you. The fool is Uranian energy and um, also just air in general. The Scorpio energy here is 8th house and that's uh, Pluto energy. And we also have the wheel, so that's Jupiter and Sagittarius in the ninth house. And Justice, so this is the Libra card in the in the deck, and that's uh, seventh house in Venus. Again, this Libra energy, big, big, big Taurus. Um, and as far as we go up here, we have the Tower, which is Mars energy, and that is Aries in the first house. So I, me, my, this is you getting de uh, declarative about what's important to you, Taurus. Remember that. Um, then more uh, Gemini and Mercury here. And that's where it's a declarative. The Ace of Pentacles could be you putting it out there and being like, this is what I'm worth. Thanks. Right. So um, that is what we have. Uh, if this resonated for you, Taurus, I would love it if you liked and subscribed. It helped me grow the channel. And I just love doing these readings. So uh, there are other ways you can connect with me throughout the month. So please do check out the other videos on this channel. But if this is where we part, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Libra full moon. Stay strong. Stay strong and stand in your power. You got this. Take care, Taurus. Bye. As if I tried to go away without doing the Miracles Now deck. Oh my gosh. Pfft. I was on so much of a roll. <laughs> so we're going to pull from the Miracles Now deck because yeah, we are. <laughs> I can change my patterns when I change my mind about them. Yep. Yes, you can, Taurus. I think that's the key here is this is kind of a pattern that you've been in. So really changing your mind about it. Is it something that's happening to you or is it an opportunity for you to declare what's important and true for you? Is this all a high, like, is this all an opportunity, right? So just be mindful of that. Uh, and also changing your mind about what's important to you. It's okay to do that. Have compassion with yourself if you've changed your mind. It's okay, right? It's okay. Feel superior to no one. This was the card. This was the uh, Power of Intention deck by Wayne Dyer. So feel superior to no one. Release your need to feel superior by seeing the unfolding of spirit in everyone. Don't assess others on the basis of their appearance, achievements, and possessions. It's an old saw, but is nonetheless true. We are all equal in the eyes of God. Feel superior to no one. That may be important just as a shadow point to, to come out. Um, you know, if, if you get into that place of being like, well, <laughs> I've achieved all of this. So obviously I know something. That's not the best energy to be in to say that you know something, Taurus. You know something because you're connected to spirit. You know something because you've been humble and learned lessons, right? The superiority piece can kind of come into play. And it the peacock kind of reminds me of the empress energy here. Like that sort of um, that richness that sensorially sense sensory richness um yeah and it could also be a reminder that if people are treating you this way you don't you don't have to use your success or or what you've accomplished or achieved as a way to prove that you are worthy because some people will use that five of swords energy to manipulate and let us believe that we have to prove that we're superior when that's we don't have to prove a damn thing we don't have to prove it so just remember that Taurus. Okay. Like I said, um, you have absolutely got this. Have a wonderful full moon. Take care.